Right, today we're going to be shooting some bits and pieces. My name's Paul Harvey and with me today is my brother Ben Harvey. You'll find us at uh, zoomedin.co.uk or benharveyphotography.co.uk. We've been asked by uh, a few people how we do the high speed stuff that we do and um, we'll pop up some images as we go. We first started shooting light bulbs um, and you'll see an inverted image of a light bulb that we shot with an air gun um, that will pop up shortly. We've also done some a little bit more creative stuff with shooting coloured crayons as well. And we've also done some light bulbs turned on. They're not photoshopped, they are switched on light bulbs that we shot through with an air gun. Today we're going to be playing around with some shooting of M&Ms um, with an air gun and we're going to be shooting some Christmas ball balls that we've got, glass ones which are filled with um, a mixture of paint and gelatine. Um, we're also going to have a go with some 9mm ball bearings shot out of a catapult which my aim is going to be uh, that, 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 that good today. What we're going to do is we're going to talk you through some of the bits and pieces that we've got set up here and how we're going about it. Air gun is um, on a uh, self made air gun holder. Everything's triggered by this laser trigger that we have here which is a Nero trigger. Very good trigger, sound, uh, lightning. Uh, laser, it also does HDR, but the main one that we're using with the air gun, the air, the air gun shoots at about 1200 feet per second. So with this we're using the laser trigger and here we have the laser pen which is directed into the Nero trigger and as you'll see as my hand goes through it, it sets the flashes off. Out of the Nero trigger we have a jack plug splitter which goes to three flashes. We we have the um, flashes set to the lowest um, power, which is uh, 128 one, um, power. Reason for this is because of the recycle times. If you're using the flash on full power, you're not going to get anywhere near close to capturing the, the uh, pellet going uh, through the objects or capturing the pellet at all. With the flashes that we're using, these are Yong Nuo flashes, three all the same, all set to the lowest power. I've used, tried using radio triggers before, which uh, they're too slow, they won't keep up, so it's all got to be um, via cable to do this. With the flashes that we've got, you won't be able to capture the pellet sharp, it's going to be moving slightly, you'll get it, depending on obviously the setup of the camera and everything, um, and the lens that you're using, you'll get it about a centimetre, a blur of about a centimetre in, in, your, in your image. If you do want to achieve something, um, I know that there are LCD flashes available at the moment um, that they've just started producing and you can also get gap flash as well which is a very high power flash. Um, I'm, yeah, a little bit risky I think in terms of the power outage so uh, we haven't experimented with that but this works fine for what we're, we're doing and we'll capture a lot of the action of all the glass ball balls being smashed and uh, paint flying everywhere which we'll sort of update you as we go. Now in terms of the camera, the um, camera that we've got here is a Canon 5D Mark III, um, which is Ben's camera. It's the Mark II. It's Mark II, this Mark one. Mark III is too precious for the Mark III is too precious, okay. So we've got the Mark II here. We've got a Canon uh, macro 100mm um, f2.8, is it? Yeah, f2.8 series lens. Um, we have got the camera settings to two seconds. So this is a two second photograph that we're going to be taking. It's going to be done completely in the dark. Um, ISO 100, f8. And we're going to be triggering this camera via um, shutter release cable. We're not going to be able to go through with you um, because we're going to be doing it in the dark, so the camera's not going to be able to pick up on that. So what we'll do is we'll show you as we go what we're doing and, and try and keep you sort of enlightened as to how things are progressing and we'll post some of the images as we go through. So from the camera? So from the camera what we've got, it's got a USB cable straight out of the uh, USB, um, micro USB port which goes all the way down to the laptop which we're shooting on the Canon software. Um, so you can basically control all the, uh, the, the, the camera settings via this but what we want to do is make sure that the images are sharp um, so that's why we're shooting tethered. Capturing the pellets, we've got a box there full of photography magazines, so that's how they end, unfortunately. Let's get cracking and see how we get on. What I wanted 
do is just very quickly explain how we work out roughly where the pellet is going to be. The Nero trigger that we've got, you can adjust the sensitivity of it um, and also you can adjust the millisecond delay between the pellet leaving, going through the laser. So when this is on, we use a laser pen. So when this is on, there we go. So as soon as that pellet passes through the laser, what we need to then do is work out when it's going to hit our M&M, for example. So the M&Ms are sitting on here. We've obviously made a good mess with shooting these. Um, so what we use is we put a marker in place. The pellet is hitting this bit of paper at a two millisecond delay from that laser to that bit of paper within that distance. We've worked that out. Now if you obviously want, depending on where you want the pellet in the shot, if you want it after you might delay it by three seconds, you may have to very slightly adjust the gun backwards and forwards, um, but by using the milli, milli delay um, feature then you, uh, you're a little bit more accurate as to where your pellet's going to end. <laughs> We've done our first ball ball shot, it's come out very very well, um, we'll put a link below or no, we'll, we'll post the image up so you can have a look and see what you think. That was a red ball ball um, with green paint, unwatered down paint. This is the next one, we're using small ball balls here in this instance which are probably about inch in size. We're going to be doing some bigger ones shortly. Uh, you're not obviously seeing the pellet, pellets already passed through but you're seeing the impact of what the damage the pellet's done. So we're gonna, we'll try and catch some with pellets in them as well. A couple of other, other pointers, we're starting to shoot lots of paint here so it's going everywhere. So what we've done, dust sheeted everything up, covered the flashes with plastic bags. Um, we've also on the camera here, because it's 100mm macro, it's an unusual um, lens size. So we've just basically put a piece of glass taped over um, because we're worried about paint, as you can see the bits of paint all over the box, that's from one shot and we've got about 20 of these, maybe 30 of these to do, so protected that, camera's all covered up. A um, couple of other things I want to mention to you, working in the dark, obviously the garage door will be shut, so working in the dark, so a good head torch is useful helps lining up the target and everything like that and the other thing, we've obviously changed clothes Ben's changed clothes as well both wearing safety goggles, essential because we're getting covered in bits of glass I've been down A&E numerous times with bits of, piece, bits of tile, shard and glass in my eye it's not nice, so definitely wear goggles, no doubts about that so we're going to get cracking, do some more shots and we'll post them on, on this video so you can see what we've been up to <laughs> So we finished our morning stroke early into early afternoon of shooting uh, Christmas ball balls filled with um, gelatine and paint. What we've noticed is the water down and paint as is seems to be better. The gelatine seems to be a little bit of a waste of time as you'll see from some of these ball balls here. Pellets and ball bearings that we've been shooting at them seem to have gone just straight through and um, obviously consistency of gelatin has been, been quite difficult to gauge here. Had some other ones with some nice little sparkles and stuff in which have been good for, for some effects which we'll post and you'll be able to see um, included within this video. But what we've done is we've put some shielded um, cardboard onto these snoots to keep the light off for the background. We've seen some of this paint and all this muck coming up in, uh, in some of the images so we've done this just basically to get more light onto the uh, uh, object as opposed to the background so that's worked quite quite well for us um, as you can see it created a very very good mess glad we used bin liners so obviously uh, the backdrop was a uh, black black sheet been using catapult um, in the latter stages as you'll see black widow with nine millimeter ball bearings which are in here um, and then the air gun we were using the 2 air gun with pellet with the air gun what we have noticed is lots of inconsistencies um, with where the pellet is in the image so uh, it's a little bit hit and miss with the air gun but we've got there got some good images obviously with the catapult we weren't using the laser trigger we we're using the sound trigger sound trigger was set to get the catapult elastic and then the millisecond delay between leaving the catapult and uh, obviously hitting the object again there's inconsistencies with depending on how hard the catapult was pulled back Hopefully that's been good and useful and um, please feel free to have a look at the other work that we've got on our websites um, zoomedin.co.uk or benharveyphotography.co.uk as well.